Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello guys. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. I want to welcome you to the show. I believe we're in episode 95. I'm doing this show uh, with a mobile recorder because we are in Central Oregon. So anyway, uh, so the sound might be a little different and I apologize, but today we're going to dwell on the past <laughs> and it seems very fitting for me. So let's move on. Well, like I was saying in this show, I kind of wanted to dwell on the past a little bit because, of course, I I, I had to drive two days up here to get to Central Oregon uh, to uh, meet up with my wife that flew in two days later. And so I'm relaxing in the RV and uh, it's gorgeous here, but definitely colder. (laughs) And uh, so, you know, driving up, you know, you sit there and daydream about everything because you got two days of just pure driving from Arizona up here to Central Oregon. And uh, I got to thinking about, gosh, what was it like when, back when I was like 19, no, 19, 17 and 18 years old, I used to be a deckhand working on the uh, fishing boats in Westport, Washington. And my father was uh, really nice to let us use a 19 foot trailer he had back then uh, to live in over the summer. Which was a great deal because we'd have our little trailer and uh, a lot of the deckhands would uh, uh, be at the, all the little motels there. Had little uh, fields in the back that allowed us to park our RVs back there and live. And we would paid like $95 a month <laughs> to live back there, which was really a bargain. And uh, it was great because uh, when you're a deckhand working seven days a week and you're on the fishing boats 12-hour days... Uh, you don't get to play much, as, although if you wanted to, uh, you know, when you're a teenager, you have the in- the only way we were able to party back then was to stay up all night and uh, suffer through the day. But we were young and could do that stuff. But I always <laughs> had to laugh about when we had to start our uh, oven or uh, heater. I don't know if you remember this, and maybe some people still have RVs like this, but you don't have the electric starts, the automatic uh, igniters that they have nowadays. So I remember, I don't know how many times we'd be out there holding a button down, trying to get the little pilot light to start on on the heater or, um, uh, well, it's just like the, just like your stove when you have to set up a pilot light. Well, we had to do that for the, the heaters too. And what else did we do it for? Seemed like it was pretty much this, oh, and the hot water heater think that's what we did and you know um, sometimes that felt kind of dangerous <laughs> but anyway but so and of course when I'm driving up here I started thinking about a lot of things we did in the past so here's something if you're my age you'll kind of laugh about but do you remember before cell phones before uh, social media and stuff like that one of the things uh just cracks me up is when we used to uh, uh, want to have a date with someone like, you know, I was dating Sherry and I'll never forget. Well, that's just how things were to call your girlfriend was to pick up a phone, dial the phone number. And typically the mother or father would answer the phone and be like, and her last name was Powell. And I just, I crack up because kids don't have to do this anymore. But it's like, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Powell, may I talk to Sherry, please? (laughs) And um, I know that, you know, there was other people we dated back then. I remember sometimes the parents would answer and it's like, you could tell they weren't too keen on the fact that you're calling her for their daughter. (laughs) And uh, so you kind of like, yeah, I'll get her. But uh, now the Powell, I mean, Jay and Neva Powell, uh, uh, they were uh, great back then. It's like, yeah, hold on. And, uh, but I don't know. I, it, it's kind of sad because uh, uh, that interaction of kids having to deal with parents, be courteous, go through the motions, 
Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Powell. You never call them by their first name. In fact, it took me forever to quit calling Sherry's parents Mr. and Mrs. Powell. Anyway, they used to give me a hard time about that. But anyway, that was just another thing that kind of cracks me up to think about. Um, and uh, the other thing I remember it was really a pain when we were traveling the first time full-time in 2005 and six. Uh, internet was just non-existent as far as uh, the RV parks. And it got really frustrating. Now, I had a marketing business, so I wasn't uploading videos back then. That wasn't the deal then. Uh, I was just an internet marketer. <clears throat> and it was critical that I had internet. And so, you know, we'd have to search down uh, like a coffee shop or something like that. But eventually, we caught up with someone who uh, uh, dealt with HughesNet. I don't know if some of you guys have used that or not. And I'm, they may still be around doing stuff. But I remember we met up with this guy. I cost me like $1,500. I had to get a satellite system and a special... Uh, kind of modem thing and uh, I would use that and 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 to set that up was such a pain I'd get to a RV park then I'd have to uh, set up the satellite on a special tripod and then I'd uh, uh, we'd have to tweak it in uh, to the satellite system and then the bad thing about it, it was an internet s oh, system that has kind of a pulsating thing so uh, it was really no good for, you know, streaming anything, all that, but, uh, it suit the purpose and it was nice occasionally, but what a pain we had to go through to everywhere we went and have to set up that satellite by hand. Nothing was automated and tweak it in. Um, and I know it was, it, just people don't realize just how nice it's getting with the RV parks that do supply internet. Of course, a lot of people go, well, a lot of places we go to is real slow. Um, but believe me, it's better than what we had to deal with back in 2006. But yeah, that's a big difference in, uh, uh, between <laughs> in, uh, the old good old days and today. That's something that's a benefit to today. But yeah, funny stuff. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, this um, I, I think the other thing was kind of funny when Sherry and I was young and we'd go camping and, you know, we just had an old Mercury Cougar thing. It was like... Uh, you know, that's all we could afford back then. I remember we'd go camping and watch these guys with big trucks and and uh, fifth wheels. And I remember Sherry and I going, God, those things are humongous. Who's be stupid enough to own one of those? <laughs> of course, 30 years later, guess what we're doing? <laughs> but yeah, times have changed. But today was kind of special. <clears throat> I got to thinking one of the things, um, and it's since I'm kind of mobile and I don't want to, I can't do my normal show the way I want to. I wanted to do something really special on this show. And so one of the things, if you're my age, some of you guys remember, um, listen to radio shows. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, and I got to thinking, uh, I have a whole library of those things. So on this show, I'm going to share with you at the end of the show, and I'm making this short uh, show kind of short because of the way I'm doing it. I want to share with you, and I'd like to do this uh, again, or maybe even do it on a regular basis till I get through uh, one of these series. But at the end of the show, I'm going to just end it with RV Talk Radio. But at the end of the show, I'm <laughs> I'm getting to it. I am. I'm going to put an episode of Gunsmoke from the 1940s on this podcast for you to listen to, and. Since podcasts are kind of designed for while you're traveling or kicking back, I thought it'd be fun. Now, this is only a half hour show. And uh, uh, the reason we have this stuff is we had a, a radio station that uh, we turned off because of it was just, uh, uh, just couldn't keep up. But anyway, I thought it'd be kind of neat to, uh, first of all, I want to get your feedback and say whether you enjoy this or not. Do you want us to do it again? But uh, I'm going to put this episode of Gunsmoke on and just let you enjoy what it was like to just kick back and listen to a story told on the radio. And <laughs> you'll get a kick out of some. Some of these have got the old style uh, commercials on them, too. So it was kind of funny. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyway, um, uh, 
Oh, and by the way, this is kind of funny. Since I'm up here in Central Oregon, we're at, we're at uh, Sherry's folks, and they're in their 80s. So when you go into their house, you know, they're always playing the, the television real loud, and they can't hear really good. And so you're speaking loud the whole time. And so if you haven't noticed, my voice might be a little raspy. It's just because it's like, <laughs> what did you say? I said, how's it going? Anyway, um, and then they're playing the television so loud. You're talking so loud that by the end of the evening, you, you can hardly talk. And so uh, I'm coming a victim of that. So anyway, without further ado, I want to uh, thank you for listening this week. Uh, next week, I'll be back at my normal studio and we'll have the uh, systems going. But between now and then, if you could give us a quick comment like I, you like the show, you like to have the gun smoke at the end. We'll do uh, a, uh, do that on a regular basis for a while. We'll we just uh, do about 15 minutes to a half hour of RV Talk Radio. And in the last half hour, we'll put Gunsmoke on. And it'll be a different episode each time. So without further ado, once again, I want to thank you for listening. And uh, we'll uh, catch you on the flip-flop and uh, uh, when we have our regular studio back. And kick back, enjoy Gunsmoke. Bye now. Around Dodge City, into the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Clay Richards. Clay Richards. Age 31. 31. Height 6 feet. Eyes brown, hair red. Eyes brown, hair red. Hey, how'd you like me to print his picture on these notices? I got a woodcut. Well, let me show you. Ernie! Yeah? That's your marshal a copy of that front page. Interviewing Clay's wife yesterday, I noticed a tintype on the mantle, their wedding photograph. So, first thing you know, I snitched it. It's very thoughtful. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it, Ernie. Here. And then I propped it up in front of me and carved me this woodcut. Ain't she prime? Ain't she just elegant? Real elegant. Good likeness, don't you think? Of course, he was seven or eight years younger with us. Yeah, it's a good likeness. Doesn't show what makes a law-abiding man like him try to rob a bank. Doesn't look like a man who murdered an old cashier and a Chinese cook who just happened to be there. But it's a good likeness. Yes, sir, it is. A picture like this sure dresses up the front page, don't it? Yeah, it's a little masterpiece, Mr. Hightower. A notable contribution to the culture of Dodge City. Well, thank you, Marshal. Does fetch the eye, don't it? I'm printing an extra 500 copies of the weekly, and I bet I sell them all. Too bad the cashier's shot went wild. If he'd managed to kill Clay or even wing him, why, I bet I could sell a thousand extra copies. We must be thankful for the blessings we do receive, Mr. Hightower. Oh, I am, Marshal, I am. Why, just before it happened yesterday afternoon, I didn't know what I was going to fill my columns with. And then, like manna from heaven, two murders and a bank robbery. Attempted bank robbery, Mr. Hightower. He turned and ran for he got his hands on so much as a dollar. Yes. Still, as you say, like manna. Dylan, I... I I'm talking you. business. What is it, Chester? Well, it can wait, I guess, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, print Clay's picture on those notices, Mr. Hightower. Oh, where were we? Uh, eyes brown, hair red. Oh, yeah. Also known as Red, Bricktop, and Sorrel. He uh, didn't answer to no other nicknames, did he? No, that's what they called him. All right, then in big letters, 
$400 reward, dead or alive. And at the bottom, apply Matt Dillon, Marshall, Dodge City. Mm-hmm. Uh, print 200 copies. How soon can I send Chester over for him? Uh, this afternoon. Good morning, Mr. Hightower. Chester. Think those posters will do any good? Richards is probably over the line into Oklahoma or Colorado by now. That strawberry roan of his is the fastest in the county. He has no money. He panicked and ran out of the bank before he got a penny. I think he'll try to get help from his wife or brother or a friend the first chance he has. Maybe tonight. I say he's around here somewhere. I, uh... I'm sorry I turned on you. Why, that's all right, Mr. Dillon. Out all night with a posse, no sleep, man's bound to get touchy. No, it's not that. It's, it's the, the way... It's the way people use a thing like this. The men riding posse last night, they enjoyed it as though they were hunting fox or possum. High tower back there, he acts like it was a birthday treat, specially gotten up for him. Everybody finds a way to use it. What, what was it you wanted to tell me? Hmm? Oh, I, I got a kid, a, a little boy, locked up in the cell. Uh-huh. He run away from home, back in Cottonwood. Ed Slade turned him over to me when he come through on the stagecoach just now. Kid about 12 years old. Who's is he? Widow woman, Miss Bonnie. She runs the boarding house in Cottonwood. Ed says the kid's always running away a little while, I guess. He flagged Ed for a ride on the road halfway between there and here. Soon as Ed seen him stand there with his bundle on his shoulder, he knowed what he was up to. So he told the kid he'd help him and then turn him over to us when he got there. All right, we'll send a telegram to the mother to come fetch him. Well, come on in, Chester, and shut the door. Mr. Dillon? You're letting in every horse fly in Kansas. Mr. Dillon, I think you better cancel the order for them notices. What? The Dutchman's coming up the street, and he's leading a strawberry roan, and Clay Richards is draped across his back. Like a sack of wheat across the saddle. Last time I saw him, two days ago. He was standing at the bar laughing his head off. A sack of wheat across the saddle. And followed by half the saloon bums and loafers in town. All right, Chester, make him keep back. All right, now stand back, you fellas. Come on now, back. Stand back. Ziegler. How'd it happen, Ziegler? My goat, my old billy goat, he pushes open the fence last night and runs away. Forget your goat. What about Clay? Yeah, I, I tell you. This morning, I go to look for the goat. I walk here, there, from near the river. I see Clay. He sits there. I say, hello, Clay. The gates. You dirty Dutchman. You know the dog? Clay was your best friend. He helped you buy your farm, so you kill him for your All right, all of you. Keep back, everybody. Clay? Me? No, no, my brother, he was like. We was in the war together. Bita, listen. You killed him for the war. Not so. I killed nobody. Not, not since Gettysburg. Clay is dead already when I find him. I don't even own a pistol. Ziegler, inside, quick. Yeah, yeah. Chester, give me a hand with Clay. All right, all of you. Listen up. Shut up! I will not tolerate a disturbance. You know me. I got him, Chester. Take his legs. <coughs> All right, kick the door shut. Marshal, I don't kill Clay. On this table, Chester. What'd you do with Clay's gun? His holster's empty. Gun? Clay's? I ain't got it. I don't even own one. Chester, see if it slipped out. His we were holster up. was empty coming up the street. First thing I noticed. Maybe it's yeah. over on the... Another customer? Why, oh, it's three in less than a day. Oh, bountiful harvest. My fees this month will keep me in luxury. In luxury! Doc, I uh, want to have an inquest as soon as possible. Well, as soon as I finish the autopsy. Shouldn't take long with the practice I've had this week, huh? <laughs> no. Uh, late afternoon all right with you? 
I'll take him up to my office right now. No, thank you, Chester. I can carry him all by myself here. You just open the door there like a good fella. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, Marshal, tell the city fathers I'd like to make a deal when the corpses are as famous as this one. <laughs> Back in 53 in San Francisco, a fella I knew earned a fortune, exhibiting the head of Joaquin Marietta. Tell them if they let me keep the remains... I'll do the autopsies for nothing. Shut the door, Chester. Ziegler, where is it you met Clay on the river? By the fort. This side, by the fort. Right out there, Chester, and see if you can find Clay's gun. Maybe he dropped it when he was shot. I did not shoot Clay. Sure. I did not. I had no reason to. I did not. I did not. Now, you listen to me. Maybe you think Dodge has got so big, I don't know about everything that goes on here. Well, if you do, you're wrong. If you think I don't know about the bank having an overdue mortgage on your farm, you're wrong. $400 is reason enough for a struggling farmer like you. No. I could not do such a thing. I, I am a human being. To a peace officer, Ziegler, that's enough grounds for suspicion. But whether you did it or not, will be decided at your trial. In the meantime, you just stop yammering about it. Trial? Me? Even when I shoot somebody, I stand trial. If they find it's justifiable homicide, and they probably will, Clay being a wanted man, then he'll let you off. And if not... Please, I am permitted to go now. Go? Are you crazy? I found this stock. I, I must look after it. You sit right down. You want to be lynched? You're trying to get yourself murdered? Have you forgotten about Clay's brother, Adam? Adam would not believe I shot him. What difference does it make whether he believes it or not? His brother's been killed. Everybody's looking to him to do something about it, and he knows it. You want me to guess where he is right this minute? He's in one of them saloons lapping up courage to come in here and ask me to give you to him for a present. You want to know who's with him? Ever loafer, ever bum, ever slob in town. Slapping him on the back and telling him what a shame it is. Egging him on to kill you so that they can have some excitement and some fun. Well, maybe you deserve killing, but it's my job to uphold the law, and I'm not letting you out of here. What? I tell you, you might about... spend your time trying to think up a better story. That is, if you intend to stay in this town. All right, now think back. Didn't Clay go for his gun before you shot him? I tell you, I didn't. If I'm not under arrest, you have no right to keep me here. I got to look after my farm. I go. All right, Chester, lock him up. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Come on now, Ziegler. Help me, senior. Help me, senior. Step out, Sonny. This cage is bespoke. Who's in there, Chester? Yeah, that little old runaway from Cottonwood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come over here, son. Come Get over here to me. Ziegler. I know who you are. <laughs> you do, do you? You bet. You're Matt Dillon. <laughs> Guilty. I knowed you right off. You just pointed out to me one day back home. Filler says you was the fastest gun thrower in Kansas. <laughs> Wyatt Earp wouldn't be awful interested to hear that, I'm afraid. Filler says you was faster than older. Faster than Wild Bill Hickok and Hay City and Fat Masterson or any of them. How many fellas have you killed? You don't keep score, son. It's something you try to forget. Not me. Someday I'll be famous like you, and for every filler I kill, I'll, I'll put a notch on my gun. People will see those notches, and they'll know they better not try Why'd it. you run away from home, bub? Don't you know your mother's likely to worry about oh, you? Oh, she won't worry. She's too busy working. You ain't gonna make me go back, are you? You wouldn't do that, would you? Well... Because it wouldn't stop me for long. I'd only run away again. Oh, where are you off to in such a sweat? Oh, Texas... California, Mexico. Fella can accomplish things there, not like living in old cottonwood. If you let me go, someday when I'm famous, you can tell people you helped get me started. <laughs> well, well that's, that's a pretty strong inducement. Um, I'll have to think about it for a while. And uh, look, uh, while I'm making up my mind, I, I want you to give me your word. Word of a man who'll be famous someday that uh, he won't try to run away from me. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll have to have Chester lock you up again. Oh, I'll shake on that. <laughs> good, good. Uh, Chester, I want you to go look for Clay's gun. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. And uh, on the way, stop off and send that uh, telegram. You know? Hmm? Oh, that telegram. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Where's Ziegler? 
It's all right, Chester. Go ahead. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. Where's that murdering dog? Oh, there you are, you... Not a single step further, Adam. I want him, Dillon. He murdered Clay, shot him down without giving him a chance. How do you know? Because Clay wouldn't have let anyone catch him off guard except a friend. A friend. And now, Dillon, give me that Dutchman. Try to take him. It's like that? It's like that. And it's true what the fellas say. You made a deal with the Dutchman to give him the reward and protect him if he'd kill Clay for you. That was the deal, was it? Yeah. The fellas say why I'd make such a deal? Dylan, it ain't no longer a secret around town that you and Francie want each other. But Clay was in the way. You had him killed so you could get his wife. Do you deny it? No. No. It'll serve as well as any other crazy story. It'll work you up. You think you're safe behind that star, don't you? Well, Clay has friends, lots of them. I'm coming back with them, friends, and we'll get the Dutchman and you and anyone else who tries to stop us. All right, Adam. I'll be waiting. Yeah. You wait. I almost seen something pretty just then, didn't I, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, almost. About another pint of whiskey ought to do it. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment, but first... Many radio shows win high popularity with the prizes and cash they give away. But there's one show that's tops because the head man gives away as little as possible. What other radio program could it be but the Jack Benny Show? So be listening. And now, now with William, William Conrad, Conrad starred star as Matt Dillon, here's the second act of Gunsmoke. Son? You say something, Mr. Dillon? Uh, yeah, open my drawer in front of you there. You'll find a small bottle of oil in there. No, no, the one to the right. Yeah, that's it. Now, bring a little brush, too, huh? Here it is. Thanks, bub. It's a right nice gun you have. Yeah, it's not bad, but a little stiff. Just a little stiff. Do you want to have a trigger? i never seen no gun without a trigger before. Oh, you remove a trigger or uh, tie it back against a guard. And all you have to do is, uh... Well, my hammer. Hey, like that. It's faster. <laughs> yeah, that's better now. Remove the trigger. I'll remember that. What in the world for? Well, oh, I remember everything you told me. About the Texas holster and the spring holster and the double roll and filing off the site. It's just me, Mr. Dillon. Oh, any luck, Chester? No, sir, not any. I went to the store first and asked Mr. Denton what kind of ammunition Clay Richard used to buy, and he told me Clay had a double action forty-four. I scarred that riverbank a half mile each way from the ford and not a sign of it. I got that telegram off. You know who ought to be here pretty soon. It's only seven, eight miles from... Is that a fire in town? Funeral services for Mr. Grinnell, the cashier. So soon? It's awful hot weather. Yeah. Um, any of your guns need oiling? Just I don't think so. You sure? When Adam left, he said he'd be coming back with some friends. I know. I stopped at the Oliphaganta just now to rinse out my mouth. Adam was there talking mighty ugly and mighty big. He's got a sizable following. Uh, when do you think? Any minute now, Mr. Dillon. It want me to take Bob out of here to one of the hotels, maybe? I want to see No, him. I think he'll be safer here, Chester, behind stone walls and dodging about the streets rubbing making. You keep your head down, sonny. You hear? There's a... Matt. Matt, I've got to talk to you. She ought to be in mourning. If she cared for Clay at all anymore, she ought to be in black. Matt. Oh, Lord, I find her more beautiful all the time. Matt, have you heard what they're saying? What are they saying, Francie? That you and me... That... That you made Pete Ziegler kill him because of... I'm sorry that got back to you, Francis. It's all over, Dodge. 
Adam almost strangled me before they dragged him off. Francie, I didn't shoot Clay. Francie, I beg you, believe me. You have a... Shut up, Ziegler. Woman, Shut up, or I'll talk you to death. Francie is just one of those crazy stories. They needed one, and they made one up. But, Matt, everyone believes it. On my way down here, people were pointing, whispering. Old women clucking their tongues at me. They believe it. They'll forget it as soon as this is over. They'll remember that even if we once did go with each other, it was finished and done with even before the war ended, before you even met Clay. No, they won't forget it. For the rest of my life, as long as I stay here, oh, I'll... Hold it a minute, Francie. Yeah, Doc, what is it? Oh, uh, am I uh, interrupting? What is it, Doc? Uh, our tops is finished. I examined his liver and lights. His this turn. is Mrs. Richards, Doc. Oh. Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I'm sure I have meant no disrespect for the departed. Well? Well, Clay was shot all right, but from the nature of the wound and the coagulation of the blood, I'd say it happened sometime yesterday. I'd say the cashier's bullet didn't go wild after all. How could a dead man gallop away? Well, the wound wasn't what killed Clay. The ball hit the rib case and bounced off. Twenty-two caliber it was. And what did kill him was the stab in the back, right through the spine. Inflicted sometime this morning. Now, near as I can judge, by a small blade, oh, two or three inches long. It could have been a Barlow knife. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, please accept my condolences, Mr. Richard. You call the inquest any time you're ready, Marshal. Chester, close the door. You see? You see, I didn't do it. I didn't shoot him. All I right, then you stabbed I... him, maybe. You said you never carried a gun. Look, Francie, go home and... Give matters a chance to simmer down. Matt, I'm going to ask you something. Yeah? Turn Pete Ziegler out into the street. What? Francie, they're itching to get their hands on him. Let him have him. It'll prove that story's a lie, that you didn't make a deal with him. Please, Matt, I have to live here. Tell me, I have to live here. Matt? Matt? Don't look at me like that. Go home, Francie. Go home or leave town or hang yourself or anything you like. Just go away. Matt? Away! Right now! I bought me a bottle at the Alifagans, Mr. Dillon. Would you care for a drink? No. Well, I guess the funeral's over. There'll be others. Funny. No, I miss that bell. Awful quiet, ain't it? It's just... W just about on schedule. Are you ready, Chester? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. I'd use a shotgun if I were you. It's more effective when there's a mob to be dealt with. Oh, yes, sir. I am. Ziegler, and you too, son. If trouble starts, lie down flat on the floor and keep your head down all the time. Don't gawk to see what's happening. You understand me? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right. Dillon! Dillon! Come out, Dillon! Chester, I want you to stand here in the doorway after I go out, where you can cover the back door and me at the same time. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. Open the door. Come on out. It's my duty to warn all of you that you're in the breach of the peace. I've sworn to uphold the law. I've killed men in order to do it, and I'm prepared to do so again. Give us a Dutchman, Dylan. Man! I ask you to be sensible and to leave quietly. But if you refuse to listen to reason, if you insist upon being fools, if you've already decided to act like wolves instead of humans, then there's nothing I can say to make you change your minds. All right, you want Peter Ziegler? Well, he's not more than 20 feet behind me, so come on and get him, any of you. One at a time or all at once. Come on. Which one of you wants to die first? You? You? You, Adam? Well, what do you say, Adam? You let him here. Don't let this star on my coat stop you. Come on. There, I'm not wearing it now. 
Well, come on, draw at him, draw! You all right, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Get his gun. Man alive, I couldn't even see your hand move. Uh, uh, Marshal! Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell Doc, me. Doc, you make one single funny remark and I'll knock you down. You just take him to your office and get to work. Well, I, I never do mean to offend, Marshal. In my line of work, well, bodies, they're just so much lumber. Make all the jokes about them you please, but not to me and not in my hearing. In my line of work, there's nothing humorous about death. Give him a hand, Chester. No, no, no. I can handle the marshals. Thank you. Thank you. Just the same. Can you direct me to the marshal's office? Uh, yes, ma'am. Right here. I'm Marshal Dillon. Well, I left Cottonwood as soon as I got your telegram. I'm Miss Bonnie. Where's my boy? Oh, we have him, ma'am. Safe and sound. Here, let me help you down. Hitch that horse, Chester. Right this way, ma'am. Oh, I'm so sorry he put you to all that trouble, Marshal truth of the matter is, he is a wild one, and no mistake. Takes after his father, one creep after another. Uh, he was no trouble at all. I enjoy children. I like to have them around. Bub? Bub, your ma's here. Son? Chester, where's the boy? Did you let him slip past you? No, sir, Mr. Dillon. He never got past me. Look, the back door's open. He seen me and he hightailed it, the devil. <laughs> we'll round him up for you, ma'am. Don't worry. Oh, I don't know why I bother hauling him back. If he's run away once, he's run away a thousand times. This time he ran because I wouldn't buy him a gun. He wanted a real one. That boy's just gun crazy, I swear. I got him a nice ball of knife instead. Barlow knife. I reckon it didn't signify and off he runs. Barlow knife? Chester finds that kid. Marshal, has he done something bad with it? I told him to use it careful. He promised he'd use Wait, it careful. That, no, no, never mind, Chester. He's got Clay's strawberry ruin. We'd never catch up to him. Oh, I try to bring him up right. I tell him to be good, but he don't listen. He just don't listen. Now, calm yourself, ma'am. Just calm yourself. Here's his little bundle, Mr. Dillon. What? Yeah, give it to me. That's pretty heavy. Here, you're better at knots than I am. Open it, will you? From the moment he was born, he's been nothing but tribulation to me. Now, please, ma'am. What's he got in it, Chester? A shirt, stockings, a piece of sausage, and this. 44 double action. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. That's Clay's gun. Sonny didn't manage to keep it long, did he? Well, if he wants a gun that bad, he's bound to get hold of another one somewhere, somehow. Chester, call Mr. Hightower over. Hey! Hey, Mr. Hightower! Oh. Come on over. Mr. Dillon wants you. Marshal, could I have at least a drink of water? What? Oh, Ziegler, uh, I forgot all about you. Uh, uh, Chester, where are the keys? Yeah, right there on the desk. Oh. Oh, there we are. It'll be safe for you to go home now. I, I can go back by the farm. Yeah, that's right. I'll send for you for the trial. Oh, Duncan should. Duncan should. Watch where you're going, you dumb... With the, excuse me. With the, with... Yes, Marshal. Mr. Hightower, it appears that we can do business after all. Get some paper and a pencil. I want some notices printed. Fire away. Wanted for murder. Wanted for murder. Uh, what's the boy's name? Bonnie. William Bonnie. William Bonnie. William Bonnie. Age 12. Height about five feet. Hair light, eyes blue. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose he's known by any other name. I know. Everybody just called him Billy. Or the kid. Also known as Billy. The kid. <laughs> Gun 
Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Walter Newman, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Don Diamond, Parley Bear, Harry Bartell, and Howard McNair, with Richard Beals, Paul Dubov, Georgia Ellis, and Mary Lansing. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Longtime favorites Amos and Andy are rising to new heights in their CBS radio series on Sunday nights. Heard on most of these same stations, Amos and Andy find trouble as constantly as ever and make it just as funny and as human as they have for more than 20 years. Be sure to hear Amos and Andy this Sunday, won't you? Right after the Jack Benny Show. This is Roy Rowan speaking. And remember, there's fast, funny quizzing on the Bob Hawk Show every Monday evening. This is the CBS Radio Network. Hey, thanks for listening to RV Talk Radio. We'll talk to you next week for episode 96. Be safe, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.